Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to talk about internship and co-ops. And many of you know that nowadays there is a huge problem with students graduating with their degrees. These may be bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, even PhD, and they don't get jobs. And one of the reasons for this problem is that they often do not have any practical experience. They do not have any marketable skills. They only have bookish knowledge. So one of the ways this problem can be removed or reduced is that you should always think of doing internships, whether you're doing bachelor, master, or even PhD. And certainly you can take advantage of various co-op programs which are given by different universities in conjunction with the industry out there. So I'm going to discuss this important topic in five different segments. So do stay till the end of the video to get maximum benefit from this work. Now let's start with the number one problem and that is whether the internships are compulsory or they are optional. Now more and more universities are of course making internships compulsory but unfortunately the case remains today that it is not compulsory in many universities. So what I would of course say is that if the internship is compulsory of course you are going to do it, you are going to go somewhere maybe at the end of your third year in the bachelor's degree program and do the internship but even if the internship is optional make sure that you do one or two internships during your bachelor's degree program and even try to do an internship in the master's degree program if this is possible and in some cases you may even be able to do an internship during your phd degree this is certainly going to help you so let's look at some of the important details about this internship problem now one of the people or institutions which is going to help you in getting internship is if there is any career department or placement center in your university or college they certainly have some programs for internship and even if this is not there it is up to you as a student to try to locate an internship during the summer and you may actually need to take some help of people here you may need to take the help of your parents or sometime it is better to approach the parents of your friends, parents of your network, and even you can go for your parents, friends, and so on. So very often what happens is that the first internship is somewhat hard to get by direct application. But if you have developed a network of people around you, you are often able to get an internship. This may be even an unpaid internship, but it's going to help you to familiarize yourself with the actual work environment out there and also it helps you figure out why exactly you are studying the things which are being taught to you by the different professors in the class because one of the problems why learning has become problematic especially for the gen z current generation is that they do not see any link between the abstract concepts which are often taught in the class with the industry out there so that is something to keep in mind now some people think that they should do internship only if they are in fields such as computer science or engineering or data science but i should say in fact internships are even more important in fields in the humanities and social sciences so whether you are studying journalism whether you are studying english literature japanese or chemistry you should always think of doing an internship during your summer now in some cases of course you can even do an internship at a different university maybe a foreign university you can figure out how to do literature reviews how to do basic research and this can help you if you are somebody who is looking for a job in the research labs and maybe you are somebody who is aspiring for a master or phd degree abroad so now let's come to point number two as to what is the main difference between the internship and the co-op so the internship is typically for two to three months. This is often held during the summer. Now there are some students who even do internship during a regular semester. So what they can do is they can do a part-time job while they are studying. And this can not only provide them with practical experience, but this can help to mitigate a lot of the costs as far as education is concerned. So do keep this in mind that this is something which is possible in many situations. Now most people say that one to two internships are actually sufficient for any bachelor or master or even phd degree program and the third internship doesn't act too much value to the particular system so what i would say is that it is a good idea to at least get one internship now don't get obsessed with getting an internship right after your first year or the freshman year in college because at that point you do not often have requisite knowledge in terms of courses taken to do a good job in the internship 
what you should try to do is wait till the second year and then try to get your first internship and suddenly at the end of the third year you are often in a position to get your best internship out there and many people think that internships are only available or should be obtained in the top companies so they aspire for the top brand names in the field but actually many more internships possibilities are there in for example startups in small companies even in governments in colleges in labs around you in various non-government organizations and so on so internship doesn't have to be just done in a big company you can do internship in any organization which is doing some work and what you will figure out through this process is how an organization functions so there is an entire concept in management out there called organization theory so you will figure out how organizations function even if this is something which is a small store it could be a department store it could be a supermarket or anything like that now let's look at co-ops now co-ops essentially go for 3 to 12 months these are often full-time work and what happens many times is that the universities have programs through which the co-op is formally arranged by the university in conjunction with the industry so very often they have signed mous with some companies out there and so the students go there and study for a or rather work for a long period of time now many co-ops are up to six months long and so what happens is that the student work for six months in some company or industry and then for six months they may come back and study so one of the advantages of the co-ops is that they directly link the education which is being done by the student at the university with the actual practical work out there. So in many universities there is actually a center which is like a placement center or a cooperative education center which will work with different companies and there are people who are responsible for making sure that the students are going to a co-op. Now whenever you are planning to apply for example for a master's degree or even any other degree you should try to go for universities which give co-op programs as part of the curriculum itself so this is certainly something which is going to be very beneficial for you in terms of getting a job after you do the degree you don't want to simply do the degree for theoretical knowledge unless you are somebody who is interested in doing PhD and becoming a professor even if you are doing a PhD and want to have a broader job possibility out there i would suggest that you do an internship now that brings me to point number three which is about the money now most interns do get paid they don't get paid a lot of money but they get paid enough to motivate them to work now sometime it may happen that your first internship at the end of the second year of your bachelor's degree may be even unpaid but certainly make sure that by the time you have finished three years of education you get a paid internship and Paid internship is good because not only it gives you money, it motivates you, but also the people take you more seriously because once they are paying you, they will try to assign you actual work and they will try to make you do some work and they will judge you in a manner in which they judge a company employee out there. Now, the fourth point is the different college company partnerships which are out there. Now, this is also something you need to investigate and study. Various colleges have developed partnerships with companies many a time they actually buy software from different companies for example you have software like ansys you have consol you have various software in cad cam and so if you are somebody who is studying in a university which has access to these softwares make sure that you learn how to use the different software packages which are out there which are often widely used in the industry remember in industry unless you are doing programming very few people write code they use software they use excel spreadsheet they use the Microsoft suite. So always remember that the different parts of the Microsoft ecosystem like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word are going to be some of the key things which are out there. In fact, Microsoft Excel is so powerful that you can do a lot of data analysis and a lot of research using just Microsoft Excel. This is something which many university people do not know. Now, if we look at the fact about internship we will see that typically internship is student driven that means the student has to get the internship but the co-ops are university driven so the university actually gets you the co-op so wherever possible try to get a co-op type of situation and if you are not somebody in a university which gives a co-op then make sure that you 
get an internship out there one of the things you can do is look at the different chambers of commerce which are there nearby you and see what are the different companies which are there and try to see if you can get an internship there so that's another idea to keep in mind beside that of course there are many internship jobs which are given out so if you look at sites such as indeed.com you will find many jobs for interns which are being given and nowadays more and more companies want to hire intern because do remember that they can hire somebody they can check him or her out during that time and then they can take this person as a full-time employee later most companies have found that it's not technical skills which actually mess up a candidate later down the road but it is the personality the attitude problems which they may have which become a problem as far as fitting into any culture is concerned now the fifth point is about the real life experience now most of you know that professors have a lot of book knowledge, they have a lot of abstract knowledge, but oftentimes they do not have any practical knowledge. So in many countries around the world, you can become a professor, you can become a department chair, and you do not need to work in any industry at any point in your life. So the professor cannot really teach you things which are happening as far as industry is concerned. So you need to make sure that you are somebody who is able to work in a team, you are not somebody who is only good at writing exams and getting marks and good grades and also you should make sure that you can communicate well with your manager and with your peers you are good at making powerpoint presentations and giving these presentation in front of many people you are also good at writing up things such as memos and small reports and so on so all these skills are something which you acquired during your internship and one of the important skills of course is to manage both up and down and sideways so essentially what you have to do is you have to talk to your manager you have to make sure all your team members are happy with you and also make sure that anybody who is working in the office for example the various secretaries the support staff they all like you also so very often a lot of social skills a lot of soft skills a lot of communication skills are required and in fact it is the soft skills which are more valued because remember once you have the degree, everybody knows that you have all the requisite hard skills for the job. So some of the important things to develop here are capability to take criticism, to think globally, get out of your comfort zone, and also to develop a network. Because like I mentioned before, it's always possible that you may get a job in the firm you are doing internship or co-op in. Or also, if you do not get a job there, these guys are going to be good references for you down the road. Not only if you apply to a different company but often if you apply to a fellowship such as the dad scholarship they do expect that you have done one year of experience somewhere so in all those cases references from industry specialists can come in handy and later down the road if you are planning to do an mba if you want to get into the management side of the equation in all those cases any reference letter from the places where you have done internship is going to carry a lot of weight in fact the weight may be more than the letters which you obtain from your professors who are simply going to say that you are a good student you got good grades in class and so you are going to do well in the courses it's important to realize that the courses you are studying in your college have some practical application and so these practical applications will be revealed to you when you do the internships then you will go back to your school and college and know exactly why you are studying the particular courses so I'm going to leave some videos on the end screen which you can peruse for further deep dive into this topic and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.